What's up, everybody, and welcome to the show. I got some fun things to talk about today. We're gonna be covering off potassium, where you can get it, this awesome shirt, and maybe a couple more things. Let's go ahead and roll that intro. What's up, everybody? Okay, so first things first, Alan had this epic shirt made right here. Mm, check out those roots, John Perry. I think it's available for a limited time on yardmastery.com. I suggest you roll over there and get one so that you can be like the cool kids. Now, what we're really gonna be talking about is something else. For a lot of you out there, you've been uh, going through and getting soil tests done, uh, read by me. And um, for a lot of you, there have been some K deficiencies and I've been talking to an awful lot of you about sulfate of potash. Now. In the beginning when I was getting these tests, I, I talked to Alan a little bit about it, and uh, the biggest thing that I was seeing, it was hard for you guys to find SOP, sulfate of potash, unless it was in very small packages and it was extremely expensive. It's not really carried everywhere. It is a higher cost uh, per pound potassium product. And Alan took it amongst himself to go out and with the help of Sunnyland, uh, put together a nice, solid SOP product. I didn't have any. I didn't have any around. I didn't really have a way to make a video about it. So I did what any normal person would do with a Oh man! I jumped on Yard Mastery and I bought my own and it came in a box. Somehow they managed to fit 24 pounds of furt into this tiny box which is very impressive. So we're all gonna do this together right now and see what we've got going on in here. So let's, uh, let's just take a look at this, shall we? Should be fun. Hmm, that was easy. Packaging looks good. So far, no problems. Oh, here we go. Yeah, there it is. 24 pounds of SOP. I think we need to take a look at it a little bit closer and then talk about why I like to recommend SOP as your K-source over any of the other ones out there. Let's take a look at this material, shall we? Oh, nice bags too. Nice and strong. All right, so check this out. This is some very nice looking material and I'm gonna get up and show you this. as good a place as any. So here's the first thing that you're gonna notice about this. It looks a little bit different. The reason that it looks a little bit different is because it is actually coated. And the purpose of that is to control dust because really potassium is very soluble. It breaks down relatively quickly. It needs to make it up into the plant. That's sort of its whole benefit. Plus because it is a cation, it is going to need to attach itself to the soil colloid. It's going to be kind of built up over time and the plant is going to be able to pull that up as it needs it. Now, a couple of things to pay attention to when we're talking about K so we can understand its overall role in plant health, as it were. Potassium and water. When you start hearing things about like stress and stress control or, or drought recovery or things like that, and using potassium for that particular reason, it is because of that, because the potassium can come all the way up, it kind of stores up into the tissue, it helps to strengthen plant walls, and it also controls some of the way that the stomata open and close as well. So when you have a tighter and stronger cell wall, it is less likely to lose water rapidly when the potassium is in there. Now another one of the things about this is, you know, K works wonderfully by itself as far as that role, but nitrogen is also required to help pull that up into the plant. So this is just another part, another tool in your total toolbox of fertility for your lawn. Now one of the other reasons that I end up recommending SOP above say MOP, which is muriate of potash, is the chloride level and salt content. SOP contains about one third of the total salt content that MOP does. So that's also something that could really be talked about is how much of a drying effect you can get if you have too much salt in the soil. That is also another ion that can take up space and then it, you end up wicking moisture away from the plant rather than allowing it to move up into the plant. So building up a high EC, uh, when you have higher salts, you end up building up higher C, that's uh, EC, that's electrical conductivity. That's not necessarily the best thing for you. You would see things like more plant wilt, tip burn, 
things of that nature when you start to build up too high of a salt content in the soil. The other benefit that you've got here is the sulfate sulfur that is in here. Now, people may say, well, I already have, say, a low pH soil. I don't necessarily want to add sulfur. Well, this is not going to adjust your pH. This is something that actually turns neutral in the ground and it's actually a neutral material when it is actually tested between the two between the potassium which tends to be the alkaline side and the sulfur which tends to be to the acidic side the two actually form sort of a neutral space when they go down into the soil but now this is also sulfate sulfur so the benefit that you're getting on here is this is k2so4 which is actually giving you that sulfate material which also will help uh, in the overall development of your turf or crop whatever you may be applying this to so going back to what i was seeing in the soil test one of the biggest things was there was a lot of k deficiencies and it really depends on what fertilizer people are buying out in the marketplace as to whether or not you're getting enough k in your program so i did that video a while back about the 412 ratio then how it equates to four pounds of nitrogen one pound of phosphorus and two pounds of potassium now that was just sort of a general thing that was put out there just like yeah if you don't know what you got going on in the ground just kind of throw this out and it won't necessarily do any harm well i think we should talk about that for a second yes there is a ratio that you could do if you know nothing and you throw stuff out there however if you are living in areas with high amounts of potassium for instance like i have here i don't necessarily want to be putting this out on my own personal lawn however in an instance just down the road at my buddy's house, he stripped out his whole backyard, removed a ton of topsoil, brought a tiny bit back in, but his particular soil is low in K because of how much he took out of it. And his lawn suffered because it did not have enough potassium put out on it. Now, he was in charge of his own fertilizer program. He put his own granulars out, he put all of that kind of stuff, and that's so on him but anyway this is something that's going to go down at his house in order to bring some of those k levels back up so one thing i should note while this is something that's a relatively safe sort of non-burning product because it doesn't have nitrogen in it it can cause some drying out because there is still salt content in this bag in this potassium sulfate so while it's less than anything else that you have out there you're still going to have the possibility of loading up a little extra salt so it's better to go at lower paces. So typically what I recommend to people using this product that have it out there is to go out at a half a pound of K per thousand square feet. Quite simply, because this is a 0048, you're going to have a one pound total volume material going out per thousand to get you a half a pound of K. Pretty simple math. When you start to think about how much you can cover with this, it's a 24 pound bag. So you run it at a half pound, what are you gonna get? 12,000 square feet. That's not too bad. So for a lot of people that are dealing with like smaller lawns or they have somewhat of uh, not a major K deficiency, but they're wanting to get some in, this is going to be an excellent option for you. I think one place where a lot of people get a little bit tied up is, you know, when do I apply potassium? When's the best time to put it out? So there's a couple of things that you can take to heart with this. There really isn't a bad time to put out K. It's essential, essential plant nutrient. It's great for your soil. It's good to build it up. Sometimes in early season and in development, when grass is coming out of dormancy, it can tend to pull more K at that time. And that's sort of, in a way, to prep it for coming up into summertime. Oftentimes, K is being applied at the wrong time of year. It's being put out when times of stress are already happening rather than building it in. So to kind of think about that a second, this should be starting to go out at the beginning of the year and built through the rest of the season, and it can go out at extremely low rates. So it's something to really pay attention to and know kind of where those levels are. Now there is a typical takedown rate that you're going to have, just like with phosphorus, you can lose about 25 pounds total per acre per year by bagging your clippings. You use much less if you, if you don't bag your clippings. Potassium is gonna have a similar thing since this is loading up into the plant tissue. And if you're bagging your clippings and they're getting hauled away, you're actually going to need to apply more as well. However, if you can sort of keep that active and keep cycling your uh, grass clippings back down, you won't ever need to replenish that two pound rate that comes with that generic recommendation. So here's the deal. One thing that you can really look at if you're building your own fertility program is there are products that are not considered combo products like this 0048. For instance, someone can buy urea, 4600. They can buy ammonium sulfate, 2100. You can go out and find phosphorus that might be like a, a 10, 
52.0, something like that. And you can sort of build your own mix as you need if you were really up for that. If, again, you already know how many pounds of nutrients you have in the soil and so forth. It's not that difficult to build out a program based on pounds or parts per million if you're going to break it down through your soil test that way and have a good robust system that you're going out and applying throughout the course of the year at different times. So I think that's about it. That's all I really wanted to cover off today. I just wanted to take a second to showcase this 0048. Say thank you to Alan for getting this out there and making it available. If you guys have gone on and searched online, you will find just how expensive this stuff is. I mean like 20 bucks for five pounds. You're not gonna be doing that with this particular mix. And this is a tool that should be in everybody's toolbox for their lawn. That's it. I'll talk to you guys real soon. See ya.